Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for the segment, we have Mark Merricks, Director of Index Research and Development with NASDAQ Investment Intelligence, to discuss the KBW NASDAQ indexes that track the banking sector and the impact from the Silicon Valley bank fallout. Mark, it's great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. And so interesting, when you were on last Tuesday, I don't think we probably would have had this conversation. It's just amazing how quickly the move, the news um, has moved through the entire marketplace. Let's take a look at your first slide here and just give us a general overview of the performance. Yeah, Jill, thanks for having me. And I'm right with you, um, right there with you. I mean, I started my career in 08. I remember those days very well. And this past week was in many ways eerily reminiscent of sort of, you know, issues coming to the fore out of nowhere. Um, SVB, you know, I think everyone understands pretty unique situation, but despite its uniqueness as an organization, um, really had the potential to cause a kind of a cascading crisis effect here within the regional bank space. Um, and so I figured we'd kind of do a check-in of some of the indexes that here at NASDAQ we, we use to track uh, both regional banking and, and banking more generally. These indexes were developed with KBW, which is uh, a leader sort of in the in the equity research space um, and other financial services for the banking sector in particular. Um, so these are not all the indexes we have with KBW. There's quite a bit more outside of this, but BKX, that's the big one. That's the KBW NASDAQ Bank Index, tracks the top 24 largest, uh, not just national banks in the U.S., the kind of money center banks, but also the largest regionals and largest thrifts. That's shown in the blue here. Um, that one is down as of yesterday's close, almost 20% just year to date. Um, and then just above that, you've got KRX, which is the uh, KBW NASDAQ Regional Bank Index. No overlap between these two. Um, so the sort of the biggest regionals that you'll see in BKX, you won't find in KSX, uh, sorry, KRX, that, one, that one's a bit broader. Uh, but even there, right, almost pacing the same type of decline, 17% year to date. Um, then we've got KSX in the purple, that's the Capital Markets Index. Names like Schwab in there have also gotten impacted negatively. Um, and then GBKX is just about flat. That's the global version of this index. So obviously much of the pain being concentrated uh, in the US, that one is, is offsetting some of that pain on a global basis. For comparison's sake, I've also highlighted the S&P in gray, which is now back down to about flat year to date, and the NASDAQ 100, which as you know, by design, excludes any type of financial sector companies from being added to the index. That one is holding on to a gain year to date of about 10% still. Yeah, well, I'm sure some of the constituents, especially on the tech side, thinking that Fed potentially might dial back a bit or at least not raise quite as much because of what's happening in the banking sector. I'm sure it's got a little bit of juice from that as we saw certainly with yesterday's performance. Let's talk about the composition more specifically. Yeah, so the main, you know, the main flagship product here, uh, the BKX, um, as I mentioned, 24 companies by design. Um, and you can see, you know, how the weighting works here. The top five max out at around 8% um, at each rebalancing. Um, this is as of end of February, by the way, the weightings. And I'll, I'll get into that in a second, why I chose that date. City, JPM, Wells, PNC, Bank of America, topping, uh, rounding out. Uh, sort of the, the the top five biggest weightings here. You'll notice other kind of big banking names like Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs, they don't qualify for this index. They are not in the sort of core banking industry, right? More on the investment banking side. Uh, but then as you go around the circle here and you see what I've highlighted in the red dash, there's SVB Financial Group um, and Signature Bank, the smallest constituent as of the end of February, those names are now both out. They've been removed from the index over the past couple of days as first SVB was obviously taken over by the FDIC uh, and then Signature over the weekend, the smallest holding in the, in the index was also taken over by New York state regulators. Um, and then those together with First Republic, uh, which is sort of in the middle here in terms of the weightings have contributed um, not quite half, but a, a serious percentage, I think about 40% of the year-to-date loss in this index, just those three names. Um, so a really, really concentrated, you know, drawdown in a, a small subset 
of this index, nevertheless, you know, having a big impact um, given, you know, given its design here in terms of tracking not just the big money centers, but the biggest of the regionals, uh, the biggest of the thrifts as well. Right. And finally, let's take a look at the performance relative to interest rates. No surprise to kind of see the inverse relationship here. Yeah, so so basically the way to read this, right, the downward sloping lines uh, in the dark and the light blue, um, those are your uh, fixed income indices from Bloomberg, uh, the, the, the dark blue tracking the, the broader um, bond market in the U.S. That one you'll notice has been rallying the past couple of days. The light blue, on the other hand, tracks the high yield market. You can see that one has actually uh, suffered in terms of returns a bit the last couple of days as, uh, you know, credit risk has kind of spiked and some of the riskier parts of the fixed income market have started to underperform. Uh, but that's all kind of beside the broader point here, which if you look at the, the trajectory of rates, this is going from left to right, uh, starting at year end 2021 for the two, the five, the 10 and the 30 year uh, U.S. Treasury. You can see we've jacked up rates from you know around one to two percent to recently the two year hitting five percent and then going in that straight pretty much straight line down. Um, I read that this was the second biggest uh, single day or two day I forget which one exactly uh, compression of yields for the two year in its history, um, which is really extraordinary when you think about that 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 leaps ahead of. Uh, periods like the 0809 financial crisis, just a tremendous compression in yields the last couple of days. Um, as you know, people sort of again, you know, this bullwhip post COVID shifting stories back and forth depending on the day, depending on the week or the month, or the quarter. Everyone thought the Fed was going to raise 50. Then they thought, well, the Fed might actually cut if we have a regional banking crisis. Now we're sort of maybe back into the base case where we were of a small hike coming up. But either way, you know, the market telling you there was a flight to safety uh, uh, with fixed income overall and within fixed income in particular, um, those riskier parts uh, of the high yield market underperforming the safer parts. This is all playing out, you know, still over the over the next several weeks, I think, in terms of folks figuring out where does the risk continue to reside in the regional bank space in terms of, you know, are there going to be more write downs due to duration mismatch? due to rates moving up on safe government bonds versus, you know, write downs on things like commercial real estate, high yield uh, credit, et cetera. So not over yet, um, but I would think we're, we're definitely past the worst of it. We're seeing a nice bounce today. All right, Mark, appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ.